Welcome to Twin Suns Tutorials. My name is Kevin Woodbury. And before I get started on today's video, I want to show you something new I'll be doing. Um, I'd like to have you go on to your web browser and type in kwoodbury.com. That will bring you to my web page. Um, so it's kwoodbury.com. And if you click on uh, Photo Gallery, and for those of you who have been here before, you'll notice there's a new section called Instructions. This section will have instructions from this point forward on any new uh, videos I create. So I, if you'd like to come here before you view my videos, you're welcome to, or after, it doesn't matter. Um, but you'll be able to uh, view, and if your browser allows it, print this page so that you can follow along or have these for notes afterwards. So just wanted to show you this. I'm going to get out of the uh, web browser and going to start in on the video. Now, today I'm working in Photoshop Creative Cloud. I could be doing this in Creative Suite, and I can also be doing it in Elements. They all kind of work the same. And what I'm going to show you is how to create a pencil image from this picture. Now, um, I'm going to go through a step that is not in the instructions I just showed you, um, but there are videos out there on, on how to sharpen an image. And technically, um, there is a step that, that talks about sharpening an image uh, further down in the video. So for now, I'm just going to show you if you go to um, Filter and Sharpen and Unsharpen Mask. Um, I'm going to intentionally over sharpen this image, so I'm going to make it about there. Now, granted, this is very sharp, and, and for a regular photograph, this would be unacceptably sharp, but for what we're going to do, it actually helps. So I'm going to say OK, and now I want to create a duplicate layer. Now, I should have mentioned that the background layer, which you see off to the right here, is a layer that's created every time you open an image in Photoshop. So I want to right click on that background layer and create a duplicate layer. And I'm going to call this first duplicate layer. And the instructions just refer to it as first duplicate. I'm going to say OK. And I want to desaturate this image. Now there's a number of ways I could do it. I could use this adjustment panel and go into my um, U saturation and and desaturate that way, but I think it's just as easy for what we're going to do to go into um, Image, Adjustments, and Desaturate. That makes this a black and white image, and truthfully it does not matter that there are missing grays or, or that things aren't perfect in a black and white world. You can correct this first if you so choose. I'm not going to quite show you how to do that today, but um, sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. And for today's image, I know it doesn't, so I'm going to just stay with this. So once I've created this um, desaturated layer, I want to right-click again and create a new duplicate layer. And I'm going to call this second duplicate. And I just put the word layer after it um, and say OK. And I want to make this layer um, I want to blend this layer with the with the uh, first layer, and I want to do that by going onto this blending box. And when you click on it, you'll see this um, these various options come up. I want to choose color dodge, and notice it gets very white. But I'm going to do something that makes it even whiter. If you hold down your command key and hit I, which is invert, and in a PC world it's Control I. This will make the image pretty white. Now, um, you do still have some black. And what I want to do at this point is I want to go down to the first duplicate layer. And I'm going to go Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharpen Mask again. But I want to show you something that other people have done. And sometimes it works well, and sometimes it, it I don't like the effect. But some people will go to Blur. Gaussian Blur, and then follow the instructions from there. Again, I'm going to stick with Sharpen, Unsharpen for this one. 
and notice it makes it into a pencil image and you can adjust the image threshold uh, which is the most misunderstood one of all uh, if it's zero it shows everything um, within the original image if it's uh, back to 255 it kind of shows only a small portion it's it basically what that that uh, white layer was showing us before so I'm going to keep threshold at zero and you can fool around with um, the amount which is the amount of this effect that you're applying um, and the radius which is the size of the cursor or pixel I'm, I'm not really sure what radius refers to but it, but I believe it's pixel or how many pixels um, but either way play around with those to get an image you like I'm gonna make this just a little bit larger because I know once I say okay it changes just a little bit but I'm gonna say okay here and notice it's a little wider than I, I had wanted it to be um, now if I want to darken this I can do it a number of ways I'm gonna go into levels but you could also go into curves or you could even go into exposure but I'm gonna go into levels and create a new level uh, layer and using my black um, and my midtone and my whites and I think I'm gonna keep white where it is I can actually uh, change the effect a little bit and I kinda like it there truthfully um, I don't want so much of the image that I'm back to a, a traditional image I want it to look like a pencil image and to me that's that's pretty much a pencil image um, that's pretty much how you do it. Now there is one other thing I should show you and that is there are going to be times where the image will have a halo or there will be aspects of the image that you find distracting and you want to get rid of um, and the best way to do that is if you go onto your second um, duplicate layer come over here to your background and foreground color palette and make sure that it's white over black white being the foreground black being the background um, if it's not that way if it if it's uh, the traditional black over white this double arrowhead kind of curved arrowhead um, tool if you click on it it reverses them so you want to make sure white is on top and then you just go to your paintbrush and make sure that it is paintbrush and not one of the others and then I can go and erase anything I like and you might have to come back over some of it but it does a pretty decent job um, now in this case I actually want those tree lines back so I'm gonna hold down my command option Z or control option no control alt Z on a PC and it'll bring it back and that's pretty much the instruction I hope this helps um, for Kevin Woodbury and Twin Sons Tutorials, I wish you a good day.